Eric Cross's last night alive began here at this lake house, where one of his buddies was throwing a drinking party. So it was a beer party. It was a keg party, right? It was a kegger. For a $2 admission charge, the teenage guests got all the beer they could drink, even though many of them were underage, like 16-year-old Eric. My parents didn't even know that he went to this party. But Eric's friends were going, and there would be a lot of pretty girls there, as well as the cheap beer, which police say Eric drank for hours. We know he was highly intoxicated when he left the party. Under Sheriff Paul Matches and Detective Sergeant Rich Madison of the Kalamazoo County Sheriff's Department say Eric was seen leaving the party around 1 a.m. and stumbling down this road toward his home, which was less than a mile from the party house. A witness told police they saw him walk past this gas station and general store just several hundred yards from his home around 1.30 a.m. And two cars, one yellow, the other a dark color, had also been seen parked there. I believe he made it home. And whatever happened, happened after he made it home. Eric's father said he heard the front door rattling in the early hours of the morning and assumed it was his son letting himself in the house. But cops say the front door was locked and Eric likely went back out into the front yard. But exactly what happened to Eric after that has remained a mystery. At 5 a.m., Eric's parents say they heard a car with a loud muffler turning around in their driveway. 5.30 in the morning, Mr. Cross came out to get his newspaper. Then first thing he saw was his son, uh, son's shoe in the middle of the road. Then Ted Cross saw Eric's body lying on the side of the road. What was the father's reaction in describing finding his son dead in front of his house? I can't even describe crying and just torn apart. He ran back inside to get his wife, Mary Lou. When you ran out there, how can you possibly ever describe what that was like? Well, we were just in shock. I ran back to the house and got a blanket to cover him up with. And I called a neighbor who had worked at the hospital, and I wanted him to give CPR. And he tried, but he said it was no use. I saw my mom's face that I knew that he died. One of the first cops at the scene was none other than Detective Sergeant Madison, who was a young patrol officer back then. And he remembers finding evidence of Eric's death strewn for hundreds of yards along the road. Plastic from car, shoes, a little more than 600 feet down, uh, there was trace evidence in that blue jean material, shirt tear material blood and what was determined to be body tissue. Initially, it was believed that it was a hit and run, but Eric's family knew something else had happened, and they pressured the police to keep digging. And then it started looking like something more involved than just a car pedestrian accident. Cops believe a group of teenagers in one of those two cars parked at the gas station, the dark colored one, drove past the front of Eric's house and saw him. At that point, he was likely grabbed uh, by this other group. One theory was they had taken Eric hood surfing. That is, he'd been tied to the hood of their car while it swerved sharply down the road and that he fell off and was run over. Is it possible at all that he was participating in that? Or do you think he could have forcibly been participating in it? Hood surfing uh, did come up in the course of the investigation, only because back in 1983, that was just something that kids did. But while cops didn't know if hood surfing was involved, they became certain of something else within weeks of Eric's death. It was not a hit and run, as they had first believed. As we investigated a little bit further, it was determined this was no accident. This was more of a deliberate act, hence murder. A particularly brutal murder. What condition was um, Eric's body in? Like, what were the, the visible signs, or what did you end up learning from the autopsy and coroner's report? Eric was uh, badly injured, contusions, deep abrasions. He had uh, rope burns, 
There were visible twists or striations uh, on his skin. He had uh, leg fractures. He had a large gaping laceration in the middle of his lower back. The rope burns you found on his body make you think that someone tied him up and pulled him by the back of the car, or? In conjunction with the uh, abrasions, the deep abrasions that he had. Yes. Do you think that's when Eric's body was dumped? He was run over at that point to make it look possibly like it was a hit and run traffic fatality. Next. Could jealousy over a girl Eric was said to be flirting with at that drinking party been a motive for his murder? We would get phone call after phone call of another theory of what happened, and we would ask those people, well, where did you hear this from? And we would have to keep tracking back and would come back to the rumor mill. 